I'm Dave Dinkle with another two minute tip and this one's about contracting. One of the biggest fears new investors have frankly is I don't know the legalities. I don't know what I'm facing. I don't know what I don't know. And that's true with contracting. First thing I want to say to you is you never refer to a contract when speaking to a seller as a contract. Always call it an agreement. But more importantly, let's go into what investors actually do. The holy grail of contracts is the one that's used by realtors and approved by the Bar Association of that state. Now, some of these are online. In some states, you can get the bar contract absolutely free and use it. Some states, you can get the realtor contract, but not many. The realtors hoard those as copyrighted materials, and you're in trouble if you use them, and that's correct. Some states lease them. The Board of Realtors actually leases them to non-licensed agents in a diluted sort of form. But they're still number one contract. But who are they written for? They're written for the realtor to protect him and the seller, not the buyer, and certainly not investors. But any clause in a written contract can be overridden by an addendum, by simply another written clause that the buyer and seller agree to. So what you need to do, and what I see too often, I've talked to very sophisticated investors who have done very well, and I say to them, what contract do you use? And they say, I use a one-pager, like they're very proud. I am proud that I use a one-pager. And frankly, it doesn't matter until something goes wrong. And when something goes wrong, your one-pager is like a, a bomb, goes off in your face. What you need to do is look at a number of contracts, become familiar with the clauses, and write in what is protective to you as either the buyer, when you're originally working on buying the property, or you as the seller to your end buyer. Critically important. A simple thing like your earnest money deposit being lost, your end buyers being lost to you, may not happen at all if it's not written into your contract properly. One of the things that typically happens is your end buyer decides, you know, I did another appraisal on the property, you have to reduce the price. If you don't, I'm not going to close. He decides not to close. If he sent in his earnest money deposit, which you should have checked on before anyway, now you're thinking, well, I'm just going to go and get his earnest money deposit. And there's a little bit of a problem. Closing agent is not going to release the earnest money deposit to you. So you could lose yours because you can't close with a seller, and you couldn't collect his because the closing agent won't release it. Why won't he release it? You put this magnificent clause in your contract that says it's non-refundable, and if you don't close, I get it sent to me instantly, if not sooner. Sounds pretty strong, right? However you wrote it, it sounds strong. But the reality is that clause is going to have to be determined by a court whether or not it's valid and whether or not it's true. Did the end buyer have cause to cancel? Despite what it says, I know what you're thinking, court has to make that decision, not the closing agent. So you say to me, well, dude, I know my closing agent. He does it for me all the time. Well, wait until one time when the end buyer sues the closing agent. And the closing agent says, hey, Dave, uh, you know, he's suing me. What are you going to help me here with? Uh, I'm not going to help you with anything because you gave it to me. The contract said that. So what happens? You're drug into court, you, the closing agent, the end buyer, and a judge says, get out of my sight, go in there and negotiate it. And you're not negotiating. And he's not negotiating. So what happens? Because you're an entity, you can't defend yourself. You have to have an attorney defend you. The closing agent is an LLC or a corporation. He has to have an attorney. And the other side, of course, because he's likely an LLC, uh, he has to have an attorney. So who's making all the money in this thing? The attorneys, which is not uncommon. So contracts, call them agreements if you want to, are written for attorneys, and they're the ones that are the beneficiary. You need to make sure when you go into the deal that your all of the aspects that can go wrong are at least covered in your contract. They're not going to be done in a one-page contract, I'm just telling you. Look at other people's contracts. If you're doing assignment of contracts, look at other people's contracts. See what clauses you like. Build your own contract, but then have it approved by an attorney. Because otherwise, you're just practicing law without a license, which everybody loves to do, except when it comes to bite you in the butt, it can be very expensive. So don't be afraid of contracts. Call them agreements when you deal with sellers and move forward because they will make you a lot of money or you're going to lose money on them. 
I'm Dave Dinkle, and I wish you limitless success in all that you do.